Hello, it's Jim from JetsonHacks.com. On today's show, we are going to connect an Adafruit Pi OLED to the NVIDIA Jetson Developer Kit. When I first saw the Adafruit Pi OLED on a JetBot, I thought it was a great idea for projects. Once I started working on a JetBot, I realized that the Pi OLED was an interesting enough project to break out on its own. In fact, most of the software here is derived from the JetBot project. Let me know in the comments below if you're interested in having a JetBot on the channel. Let's install the display on the Jetson. Here's our Jetson. It has a Noctua fan installed. Here's our Adafruit Pi OLED display. Let's turn the display over. You can see that it has female headers on the back here. We mount this on pins 1 through 6 of the J21 GPIO expansion header. Make sure the Jetson is unplugged before doing the installation. This is very simple. Put the header on pin 1. Make sure it's lined up. And then press down on it. Make sure it seats all the way. Here's our pro tip for the day. If you remove the plastic film on the display, you will be able to see the display better. Mr. Fire Extinguisher wanted to pass on congratulations to his British cousins. And, contrary to the rumors, we are not getting a narwhal. Let's go plug this puppy in and start installing the software. On the Jetson Hacks Nano account on GitHub, there is a repository named install pi OLED. Let's clone that repository. And switch over to that repository's directory. Let's take a look at the readme. The Pi OLED uses a SSD 1306 display driver. Interfruit has written an interface for that. Let's install their library. Password. Let's look at that script. You can see the script does a couple of things. It adds us to the I2C group. The Pi OLED communicates with the Jetson via I2C. We also install Python 3 pip and Python 3 PIL. PIL is also known as the pillow library. And then we install our Adafruit SSD 1306. While we are here, I'll note that our I2C permissions do not take effect until we log out and then log back in as this user. In our case, we'll just use sudo for the time being until we have to reboot. So let's go over to our example. It's in the directory pi OLED. Clear this off. Switch over to Pi OLED. The name of our application is stats.py. Let's run it. Here's where the excitement begins. Okay, we should be able to see the Ethernet address of the Nano the amount of GPU being used, the amount of memory being used, and the disk space. You'll notice that when we use the GPU, our little bar graph will change. Let's open up another Chromium window, and we'll wander over to Jetson Hacks.
So you can see when I scroll that we are actually using the GPU. The little bar graph moves a little bit. And we'll close that up. Let's take a look at the stats script. We'll go through the script real quick here. We import Adafruit SSD 1306 so that we can talk to the display. From Pillow, we import the image, image draw, and image fonts. We have some functions here to get our IP address, the CPU usage, and the GPU usage. And then we start setting up to display on the PIO LED. We create a new pillow image and we associate that with our drawing object. And we'll clear it out here. Now we run our display loop. We clear out the image buffer. Here we calculate our memory usage and our disk usage, and we draw some text. So the first line is our ethernet address. As an alternative, you could use the wireless address here. That's commented out. And then the next thing that we do is take our GPU usage and write it as a bar. The bar is related to the amount of GPU that's being used. If you don't want the bar graph, you can just draw the text. And then we show the memory usage and then the disk usage. This statement takes the image from the Jetson and sends it off to the PIO LED. And then we tell the PIO LED to update itself. At the end of the loop, we tell it to sleep a little bit. The sleep time is in seconds. So you can take one second and divide it by the number of updates per second desired. In this case, we do four. Let's increase that a little bit. We'll interrupt that. Let's say we want 20 frames per second. We would just replace the four with 20, save that, close that up, and run it again. Run our little test again here. So you'll notice that the display is updated much more frequently than it was. Now let's take our application and turn it into a startup service. What that means is that we will take our application, turn it into a global library, and then write a service wrapper so that we can run it at startup. Part of this is Python nomenclature. The first part of this process is to create a global library. One of the mechanisms for doing that is to run setup.py. It's here at the top level of install PyOLED. Setup.py. And it's basically setup. And then there's a whole bunch of information that you can put in here. I've done the absolute minimum. For your project, you'll want to fill it out fully. Let's take a look at the build script. It's called create service.sh. The first thing we do is install the build tools. And then we run setup like we just talked about. We want to build a wheel file. And then we'll switch over to our distribution directory where everything got built. And then we will install our wheel file. Note the sudo here. This tells us that we are going to do a global install global installs go in slash user slash local slash lib by default. If we omit sudo, then it does a local install. Those are in a hidden directory under our username in dot local. After we build and install our global library, we're ready to build our service. Here's the script to do that. It is located in the utils directory create stats service.py. This script creates a template which you place in the system D area. We'll take a look at it. The important part here is it runs Python 3 and then it runs our little application. One more part in explanation. 
the nomenclature of Python again. Let's take a look at the PyOLED directory. A Python script like this is called a module. A Python package is a directory that contains at least one module and this special file, double underscore init double underscore dot pi. In this case, this one's empty. You also may hear this referred to as dunder init. The full package that we are building is called a distribution package. So let's get to work. Password. Okay, it looks like everything is installed. Let's go take a tour. Let's open up a terminal. And we're hoping that it showed up here. It's going to be in the Python 3.6 directory, distribution packages. And there it is, PyOLED. Pretty much as we expected, there's our stats.py. So that looks good to go. Let's go take a look at our startup. Startup services are in slash etc slash system D. We expect to find PyOLED in system. So let's wander over there. There it is. Let's take a look at it. So it's pretty simple. It even says it's simple. It says type equals simple. So once startup, we'll call Python 3 minus L PyOLED dot stats. And just as a reminder, systemd is where all the startup action happens. You may remember our friend nvgetty.sh when we were talking about the UARTs. We are ready to reboot. I'm going to power the system down. And when we start it back up, the OLED should light up. Fingers crossed. Will wonders never cease? Notice that it lights up even before you get to the login screen. The Pi OLED is a pretty useful addition to the Jetson Nano, especially if you're running headless. You can keep system status on there, one thing that's really useful is to have the Wi-Fi address of the device, especially if you have it remotely mounted somewhere or on a robot. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you have not already, please subscribe. And this time, thank you for watching. Mm -hmm.